entrance antiphon for the Mass of Thanksgiving Day from the book of Ephesians. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts, always thanking God the Father for all the things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Father, all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on this Thanksgiving day with gratitude for your kindness, open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child so that we may share your gifts in loving service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. And now bless the God of all, who has done wondrous things on earth, who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart and may peace abide among you. May his goodness toward us endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill, he lifts up the poor to seat them with princes, with the princes of his own people. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account. For the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem. He traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten persons with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing that he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at, his, at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said to him in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? But none has none has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God. Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is a very special day for all of us. Today we celebrate, of course, Thanksgiving Day here in the United States. It's a day very special to give thanks and praise to God for the many graces and blessings that he has given us. As I've said many times this year of 2020, uh, it can be hard uh, to realize this and to thank God for graces and blessings in the midst of such great difficulty. I know most of you probably feel the same way, and uh, I'm sure that the majority of us are ready for this year to be over, and that we are ready to welcome in a new year very soon, and in welcoming a new year, hopefully a new beginning. I feel the same way. But in the midst of all the challenges and the difficulties that we have um, encountered this year, we have to keep telling ourselves, because it's true and it's real, God is with us. God is present with us in good times. God is present with us in bad times. And at times, probably many times, it's difficult to feel the presence of God when life is difficult and inconvenient. But remember, God is here, God is with you and with me, especially in the difficult moments of life. God gives us the grace and the strength that we need in order to survive. We need God and he is here to help us not only to survive, but to thrive. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is the highest, most perfect, most powerful prayer that we can offer to God. The Eucharist that we receive from this altar, the gift of the real presence of Christ, is the ultimate act of thanksgiving that we are able to offer to God, our Father. We take a moment to thank God for the many gifts and blessings that he's given us this morning. Even if we have heavy hearts or it's difficult to be thankful this year. We completed a book study here at our parish on spiritual warfare. Uh, these past couple of months, we've been studying the effects of God's grace, but also the effects that darkness has upon our hearts and our minds and how uh, it can be difficult in order to, uh, to deal with the darkness. Consolation is being close to God. Desolation is feeling far away from God, missing God's presence or a dryness there. In that book, I loved how it said, what is the remedy 
for, des for desolation. A grateful heart is the remedy for desolation. A grateful heart helps us in the midst of great difficulties and when life is challenging. This desolation, this time of challenge, isn't going to last forever. Praise God for that. And the book told us that. We know life is up and down, frontwards and backwards, hot and cold. Sometimes we feel close to God. Sometimes we feel far away from God. And where is God's presence? In the midst of desolation, in the midst of great trial and confusion, a challenge, inconvenience, reflecting upon the many gifts that God has given us, having a grateful heart is the remedy to desolation. Good times will come again, hopefully sooner rather than later. It just makes sense. If all I do is wallow in my misery, reflect upon all the bad things going on in the world, and let myself become overwhelmed and let the negativity just snowball out of control, I come crashing down. And that's exactly what the darkness wants. Makes sense. If we wallow in our negative, miserable thoughts, it becomes all-encompassing. And it brings us down. It can be very detrimental. Makes sense. That's common sense. That's why in the midst of the desolation, the remedy is a heart of gratitude, recalling the presence, the graces of God in the good times, and how has God been present in the midst of great challenge uh, and hardship and inconvenience. Heart of gratitude is the remedy for desolation. We definitely need that, and I keep telling myself that so that I don't become stuck in the mire of negativity uh, and division and hopelessness. That's why we come to the altar of God today to be strengthened and ask God to continue to be with us, especially now, especially as we enter the holidays in the midst of another surge, so on and so forth. Just ask in the grace of the Mass this morning, which is the highest form of praise and thanksgiving and worship we can offer to God, and God is here. Just recall in the quiet a silence of your heart, just take a moment to reflect upon how has God helped you? How has God been present to you? Especially when it's been hard to feel or hard to find, God is here and he is with us. How has God blessed you and helped you this past year? Take a moment to give God thanks and praise in the quiet of your heart for his tender love and mercy. May God bless us always. Amen. Let us pray. We call upon the Lord our God and offer him our prayers and petitions and thanks and praise to him. For all members of the church, may the love we share in Christ Jesus grant us comfort and peace in these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. For all local and national leaders, may God grant them compassion and wisdom in their decision making we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are sick and suffering, especially this holiday season, may the Lord place his healing hand upon them to give them strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
for our faith community gathered here and those worshiping from home on this Thanksgiving day, especially those who are alone, uh, those who are sick and suffering, those who cannot gather with family or friends on this holiday. May the Lord show us the many things for which we are to be grateful. We pray to the Lord. And for those who die this day, may the Lord shine his face upon them and bring them to his eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And all the prayers written in the book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we can never thank you enough for your goodness and kindness to us. Please accept our prayers, which we offer through Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing to God, the Father Almighty. God, our Father, from, who, from whose hands we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings and gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine, and let the perfect sacrifice of Christ draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin, and every blessing. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command to form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon from Psalm 116. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The chalice of salvation I will raise, and I will call on the name of the Lord. For those worshiping with us from home, we now offer this act of spiritual communion, inviting the presence of Christ into your heart and soul. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. In this celebration, O Lord our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you have a very good day today. And just remember that the office is closed today and tomorrow and there's no Mass in the morning. And we will pick up with Mass uh, as usual this upcoming Sunday for the first Sunday of Advent. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.